as society evolves, survival needs change. And that's another way to look at spiral dynamics. What spiral dynamic stages are, they're responses to various kinds of survival needs. But look at how this works. Like if, uh, if an animal is living in the forest, it has certain survival needs. If an animal is living in the desert, it has a different set of survival needs. If it's living in the tundra, in the wilderness, in the Arctic, it has a different set of survival needs. Each set of survival needs corresponds to the particular environment that it needs to survive in. But look what happens with mankind. Mankind shapes and creates its own environment, which adds a very interesting extra layer of depth to this whole um, survival needs issue. Because mankind doesn't survive in a forest for the most part, or in a desert, or in the tundra. We survive within the society and culture that we create. Most of our society is collective. So think of it as like, we are like ants building an ant colony, or we're like termites building this giant termite colony. So we are creating literally our own environment. We are terraforming the planet around us to suit ourselves. But as we do that, uh, we then become our own greatest enemies because it's our ch changing social climate and all the changing technological advances that are happening, the cities that we're building and so forth, that now creates new sets of survival needs. Now it's no longer about who has the biggest muscles and who can physically dominate nearby tribes. We have outgrown that. Now it's about how capable are you at socializing and schmoozing and playing politics? That's what you need to ascend and to survive within modern society. How good are you at using technology? If you're a good um, uh, tech user to the point where, let's say, you can be a programmer, you know, programming gets paid very well by society. So if you want to survive in, in modern times, become a programmer. It becomes very easy to survive and to feed yourself and to feed your family because our social environment, the structure of our ant colony has gotten to the point where we need a lot of programmers because we have a lot of computers and computers are very powerful at shifting information. We're in the information age. See? And then, you know, in a hundred years or a thousand years, it'll be something else. It won't be programmers. We'll need somebody else. And all the programmers, they'll go hungry and broke. So, um, so you got to understand that, you know, as our society changes, what you need to survive within that society changes. Certain things become less important. Certain things become more important. Like having big muscles is not important these days. Knowing how to use your mind, though, that's very important. That's very powerful. Knowing how to use your mind properly can earn you millions and billions of dollars. Knowing the right skill sets, how to program, how to socialize, how to network with people. These sorts of soft skills, as you might think of them, are way more important than the hard skills of like being a lumberjack, cutting down a tree, or um, being able to drive a bulldozer or something like that. These are much higher value than, than those old kind of skills because we don't need them as much. So mankind is in a process of bootstrapping itself. And ultimately what's happening within our society, what our society, the environment that we're creating with our society, our ant colony, our ant colony is making it easier and easier for more people to be more conscious. Today in the 21st century, we have access to books and videos and resources and institutions and education that can quickly get you to stage green and beyond. And so ultimately we're engineering and this is all happening spontaneously. Nobody is masterminding this. No individual human really even understands that this is happening. Is that this ant colony is sort of naturally evolving to the point where in the future, in a thousand years, most kids who will be born, they will be quickly transitioned into stage turquoise and beyond. And they will have very high levels of consciousness very quickly because their ant colony will have been designed by thousands of years of evolution and struggle and hard work to make that just effortless and easy. 
in the same way that, you know, today, if you grow up in a first world country, you're going to be literate. 99% of people in America who are born today are going to be literate. It wasn't like that 300 years ago. It's not like that in many other places in the world. You know, in Africa, I don't know what the percentages are, but they're low. In certain parts of Africa, there will be less than 50% of kids who are literate, who even are able to go to school because there are no schools or because the, the area is so dangerous that just going to school is a, is a risky affair. See, likewise, you know, in the future, enlightenment will be very easy for people because you'll be just told about it from the very, very beginning. From first grade, you will already hear about it from kindergarten. Um, and it won't seem weird or woo-woo or new age or any of this sort of stuff. It'll just be easy. Your parents will already be enlightened. All your friends will be enlightened. Your teachers will be enlightened. So, of course, you'll get enlightened super easy. But uh, not in our lifetime. That'll take some number of hundreds of years to get there. Maybe thousands of years. So, uh, I just want you to understand what's happening at the very big picture level. At the big picture level, consciousness is bootstrapping itself. And it's building the infrastructure that it needs to facilitate more consciousness.